You will begin to understand the spiritual darkness and the dilemma within. I think I have for you one of the finest illustrations to show to you how a recognition of man's lostness serves as a propelling force. The first missionary America ever sent overseas was Adoniram Judson. If you have not read his biography, please read it. One of the finest minds America has ever produced. He was so brilliant, when he was 12 years old, he was teaching the adult Sunday school class the book of Revelation from the original language. Now, if that's not intimidating, I don't know what is. <laughs> he was so brilliant that people became petrified of Mr. Judson, and rightly so. When he got into college, he made the fatal mistake of thinking he was more brilliant than God. And his intellectualism got to him till he disavowed his faith. And then he became a terror. He went to Providence College in Rhode Island. He became a terror to his classmates who were Christians because Judson was so powerful in debate that he would knock them off any of their beliefs and they would avoid him. He had a roommate, a fellow by the name of Jacob Ames. Jacob Ames and Judson became very close. Jacob Ames came into Providence College professing to believe in Christ. He graduated out of Providence College professing to be an atheist and he gave the credit to Adoniram Judson. His mother didn't know how to deal with him, so she just prayed for him. Father tried to talk to him, but he figured he'd knock the faith out of his own heart, so he decided to leave Judson alone. Many years went by, and the faculty members kept a close eye on Judson, wondering what such a genius was going to do with his life. And one day, he was riding to the city of New York to be trained for theater. At the end of his interview, he was riding back to Boston, and it was a long, long ride back. He they was so exhausted, he stopped in at an inn and asked the manager if he could check in for the night. And the manager says, sir, we really can't give you a room. They're all full. Mr. Judson says, Mr. Manager, I'm so tired, I'm falling asleep. Would you let me sleep in the front hall? I'll get up before it's dawn and leave here because uh, I'm so tired, I'll pay you the price of a room. I just need to lie down. He said, Mr. Judson, I do have a room that's available, but I wasn't going to rent it out because adjacent to that room is a man who's very sick. From his body is emanating a stench of decay. He's dying, and he's crying in alternate fits of stupefaction and raving and profanity. But if you want that next room and he won't bother you, I'll give it to you. Judson said he won't bother me. But Judson lay awake at night listening to this profanity, listening to a man in untold agony crying out for help. And Judson tried to smother the sounds, tossed and turned, and gradually the sound subsided and Judson fell asleep. Next day as he was paying his bill, he said, what happened? Did the man feel better? He said, no, Mr. Judson, the man died. He died in the early hours of the morning. Judson says, out of curiosity, what do you do? A stranger's come into your inn and he dies on your hands. He said, yeah, it does pose a problem, but I'll tell you something, as I've looked over his papers and trying to contact the next of kin, I cannot put together how a man of his credentials and his, his brilliance has died such an ignominious death all alone in these conditions. He was an honors graduate from Providence College in Rhode Island, Mr. Judson. His name was Jacob Ames. And Judson paused for a moment and said, what did you say his name was? And he said his name was Jacob Ames, a Providence College graduate. Adoniram Judson, in his biography entitled To the Golden Shore, says this, I got onto my horse and I started to ride back. And I could not see in front of me, for the tears began to pour down my face. And as the tears were pouring down my face, two words were pounding into my heart as the hooves of the horse were pounding into the ground. And the two words were death Hell, death, hell, death, hell. He says, I got off my horse and knelt on the dusty road, repented bitterly of the way I had betrayed my God. For Jacob Ames now lay delivering up an account of his own soul because I had knocked out any faith that he'd had in God. He checked out of the United States and went to India, was kicked out of Calcutta and went into uh, Burma. Do you know that his first wife died out of an oriental disease her body had contracted for which she had no sense of immunization? And out of sheer loneliness, he remarried. His second wife died. Three or four of his children died. His missionary colleagues died. And this man was laboring almost in a funeral director's camp, losing all of his colleagues, till finally he himself realized he was in an awesome battle. It took him seven years to lead the the first Burmese to Jesus Christ. And yet, if you read Don Richardson's book, Eternity in Their Hearts, 
He will tell you something that Judson did, which Burma will always be indebted to. As a matter of fact, if you go to Adoniram Judson's hometown today in Malden, Massachusetts, you see, Judson was imprisoned by the Burmese authorities because of his successful preaching of the gospel as many, many started to turn to Christ. And Judson was, was put into a boat after being imprisoned for 18 months and people could not recognize him anymore. And the Burmese authorities knew he was gonna die a few days away, so they put him in a boat to send him back to the United States. He never made it. He died en route back. In Malden, Massachusetts, there's a small gravestone that says Adoniram Judson, born such and such, died such and such. The ocean is his sepulcher. The Burmese Bible is his monument. His record is on high. He translated the Bible into Burmese. His wife translated the Bible into Thai. And Don Richardson points out that in Burmese folklore, there is a grim reminder to the people that the answer, and Judson didn't know this, by the way, and Don Richardson points out that in Burmese folklore, there was a belief that someday a man was going to come with a book which would have the truth in it, and Judson spent years and years and years producing that book. Death, hell, death, hell, death, hell unless you and I recognize that the person out there without Christ is lost, we will never carry a burden and a personal pressure within our own soul. And my friend, may I challenge you tonight to seek God for that burden.